Have you ever really wondered why you have a garden? Why we bother as individuals and as societies with keeping and maintaining these little plots of green in our homes? Is it just pleasing on the eye? Something nice to wake up to? Perhaps, but it must be more than that. Of course, gardens are much more than what is in our homes. The garden is really just an umbrella term to describe the spaces where we interact with nature. These can be small or large, hidden, extravagant, built or found, public or private. In this sense, the whole planet is a garden, but a garden that size would be way too big for any one person to manage. Instead, zooming in onto this world, we find an array of gardens, each with various appearances, but undoubtedly serving the same purpose. The film you are watching will attempt to break down illusions of scale that exist between gardens we are used to seeing and ones we are not. It will attempt to reposition Western thinking in a more relatable way towards what might be the greatest garden of them all, the Amazon. To the city people of the West, things here seem to play by different rules. There are places, peoples and purposes that don't quite gel with the way of the West. But then, what does? It is easy to think, for us in our faraway cities, of this great ancient forest as something far removed, distant, almost abstract. But it's not. Really, the Amazon, like everything else, is a natural object that's been under the influence of the human character for millennia. It's somewhat ironic that it's taken the pillaging of the Amazonian gardens to reveal the hidden truth beneath the trees. The geoglyphs are figures geometric that have been excavated by ancient peoples and unknown to today. They are circles, quadrados, quadrados incomplete, quadrados with circles internal and even octagons, a figure with eight faces equal. A possibility of being structures naturais, like fendas or ondulations, is descartada devido à incrível precisão dos símbolos. Reasons for these creations remain unknown. However, in time, human activity in the Amazon encouraged useful trees to grow, and the landscape began to change. Palm trees for food and building materials, among others, became abundant and still dominate the forests of today. The vast forest was honed down into its small, rustic, manageable slices, and the first gardens of the Amazon were born. A series of gardens, in fact, managed by a series of people all across the land. The early indigenous settlers seeking a way of life were one of the first to properly define their relationship with the garden, taking it to mean a home, their home. The word garden arrives from the word for enclosure, and the Amazon became the perfect progenitor. A home is, after all, the most useful of built spaces. I think when they, they, they worked here, it was not the forest. And the, when the, the area was abandoned and the forest took over. Huh? And now we are, we are chopping down the forest for cattle, ranching and so on, for grassland and beer on the ground. Up here, yeah? And probably inside the forest, yeah. under Huh? They say it's, uh, Ericsson say, is a man-made landscape. Huh? Yeah, it's uh, artificial. It's not natural. The societies taking shape in the West, slightly later than events in the Amazon, found themselves feeling somewhat melancholic about their gardens. For them, the recent move in cities was tough. In this moment, 4,000 years ago, an Aegean captures the inherent sadness of leaving nature's riches behind, which is so often a source of human exhortation and solace. For thousands of years, the Western world secretly lamented the fact they moved inside. Perhaps this late move into cities, evolutionary speaking, may help explain the universal affinity we have to nature and green spaces. After melancholy comes marvel. The story goes that Alexander the Great was awestruck the first time he saw the hanging gardens of Babylon. Imagine his reaction to seeing the Amazon. 
For centuries helped to reinforce the garden as the embrace of nature, the peaceful and idyllic, the useful and beautiful. It doesn't take long before the garden moulds into the idealised place of safety and comfort. Gardens, whether found or made, became more and more tied with the human way of living. Even into the second half of the millennia, when cities become the unmistakable blueprint of the world, we did not remove the garden from our homes or hearts. If anything, they became bigger, more complex and more public. So the history of the garden, at first pristine wilderness, is in fact detailed entanglement of humans and non-humans, mind and body, ecosystems and their responses, dependence and interdependence. Both in the Amazon and the West, a deep and old symbiosis reveals itself. So the gardens are ancient, this much we now know. But its continued existence is because it quite literally brings existence. It is a place of life, where life lives, where life grows, and where life dies. Ultimately, we call this food, which the garden provides for us and others. What grows is eaten, what falls is picked up. This is albicocca. What is albicocca? It's a fruit, what is the pesca. Ah, okay. This is the patate rosse. Questa è la patata rossa che pure questa ha fatto già il fiore. As the manioc slowly matures, other plants are intercropped in the garden. Questo è il sedano, questo qui, però ancora è piccolino. Peanuts, corn, plantains, sweet potatoes and yam beans. Basilico, vedi? Questo basilico, bello. Questo è il pomodoro. Thus the Waudani managed to extract a wide variety of crops from a single garden. Basilico e cipolle. Basilico e cipolle. Whatever the space available to us, we use. Large. Each Yanomami hut stands in a rainforest clearing several days walk from the nearest neighbors. It's surrounded by gardens where the Indians grow the fruit and vegetables that make up most of their food. Or small. È tutto qui. Tutto qui. Perché purtroppo il mio giardino è piccolissimo. Vabbè, si no. fa. <ride> si fa un po' quello che Ma... Perché questo praticamente è il balcone. Eh sì. Non è che. <ride> Solo che io lo chiamo il mio giardino. Cultivating, gathering, hunting, fishing. The indigenous peoples in Amazonia have long since used their gardens in an unceasing yet sustainable way, and the techniques that they have picked up and passed down represent the best of human ingenuity in living sustainably. Take Terra Preta, for example, a uniquely human soil. The rainforest grows on a thin layer of impoverished soil. Since most of the nutrients are held in the living vegetation, the soil will support only a few harvests. The master gardeners then found a way to reverse the fortunes of the soil. They used a method called slash and char, which involves clearing an area and then partially burning it. The terra preta brings with it many benefits, not least making the Amazonian soil suitable for crops. It stabilizes the fertility of the soil for hundreds if not thousands of years and can even act as a form of carbon sequestration, locking up the CO2 within the vaults of the charcoal. Sustainability is a dialogue, not an argument. It requires an immersion that is not completely inherited in the West as it is in the Amazon. Over there, the gardens are sustainable because they are based on trust, a deep and basic trust, manifested in the willingness the indigenous have to enter into dialogue with the land, the animals, the plants. Although we cannot expect everyone to start using terra preta or everyone to move out of cities, which are indeed the apex of unsustainability. Having said that, let us in the West learn to engage in this ever-changing dialogue, to immerse ourselves in the gardens of the earth, to learn a little of this trust. It's called Big Hill or Mineral Hill. The upper left-hand corner, you can see a tree. Little corner is all that you can see of any kind of a horizon line. It, it talks about ascension, but also the human figure being totally immersed in the landscape. Oh, 
astrologia, ela diz o seguinte, ela diz que você pode manejar o solo. Você pode aumentar a fertilidade do solo sem o uso de insumo químico, ou de adubos que venham de fora da propriedade. Terra Preta can be made almost anywhere in the world. Eu, a casa, como tu sai, recolgo tudo aquilo que manjamos nós, aquilo que lachamos nós. In this village in the Frankfurt region, it's made with mown grass, dried leaves, the remains of mushroom cultivation and manure. The cycle of planting and harvesting, abandoning the old gardens and moving on to the new, is continuous. Well, the Yanomama um, have a staple food, which is the plantain. When the plantains run out in the gardens, they're out of food. So they had to revert, probably, to the way they lived uh, thousands of years ago, which is to be hunters and gatherers. They have to pack up all of their possessions, abandon their house and gardens, and start trekking in the forest. In King's Cross in London, tomatoes have replaced trash in gardens created in old skips. The reason why we're in skips is because we're a portable garden and we've been uh, to three sites before we were actually on this one. Então, a minha mensagem é isso para ele, para uh, pensar no coração e pensar no Whatever you plant in Terra Preta does exceptionally well. Staff themselves can touch, feel, taste what sustainability means in its kind of holistic sense with the community environment. Now the senior chief addresses the whole village. Chikiri, Payakan's father, tells all the men to hunt in the forest for village food. <laughs> When asked if men ever do gardening, Mima laughed. Men? They could never do it right. They'd ruin it. They only know how to chop. Awengi, awengi, awengi. More than just fulfilling a physical need, the garden allows for everything that makes us human. Emotions, reflections and interactions, knowledge and spirituality, time and memory, family and friends. As well as existence, this is a place of experience. We want to teach the dream of our shamanism. And I grew up with the story of the Cobra Grande, of Boto, of Curupira, and... E faz parte desse universo espiritual nosso. Botar aqui nessa buraca, botar um em pó, né? Em pó. Aí depois, sobrar com outra pessoa, com outro nariz de pessoa. Ele leva para conhecimento, para entrar no, no cabeça, para conhecer o mundo, né? Como o mundo da terra, do água, e céu, trovão, lua, estrela. Ele vai mostrar tudo, vai mostrar para conhecer o Pai, conhecer uh, o que, que existe dentro do universo. These are all scenes taken during shamanism and I try to show how the spirits dance around the people and how they descend. The spirits come down from the forest or from the mountain or come out of uh, the water and how all this has to function together. Hidden from public view behind the 20-foot walls of Her Majesty's Prison Kingston are three acres of secret gardens cared for by the inmates. 
the prison service is committed to providing opportunities that will help make them useful citizens upon release. Nice in the desert. It's good. It really is nice. Especially when you're on your own, you know, you just watch clouds go by. Instead of just concrete. It's, it just makes you feel good. Anything which, you know, gives someone something to think about when they get out. You know, it can only be beneficial, doesn't it? Goaling's important to me now, because uh, it can be my whole career when I get out. And it's something which I never really had. I was jumping from job to job to job, in, in between that being a thief, which just, you know, I never thought about the future. But after, after all this time away, you know, you, you've got to start thinking about the future. And I think you've always got to have something interesting in life. Always. Locus Aminus, Latin for the pleasant place. In some sense, the Locus Aminus directs us to think of the garden as pure existence, physical and mental, and the relations that exist within it, natural and man-made. Y yo soy muy sensible a esa, a la, a la, a la belleza o a la, o la plenitud de estar en determinado momento en un cierto sitio, ¿no? Yo una cosa a la que quiero aprender en la vida es estar plenamente en los sitios, ¿no? Es decir, estar aquí ahora mismo, pues estoy aquí plenamente, ¿no? El locus a menos no tiene por qué ser un jardín extraordinario con césped y con, y con gorriones, puede ser, puede ser cualquier sitio, ¿no? en cualquier momento. As dusk approaches, families gather together in front of the thatched longhouse to groom each other, removing jungle insects acquired during the day's activities. We have a barbecue, we have a Christmas tree in the square, so we sing carols and have mince pies at Christmas, and it's a lovely way to get people together. A simple necessity of jungle living becomes for the Waodani a warm and welcome family ritual. Que para os não indígenas existem caixinhas onde toda a vida é alocada, como gavetas, né? Cada gaveta serve para uma coisa. Entre os povos indígenas não existe essa gaveta, porque tudo acontece ao mesmo tempo. A vida ela é plena em todos os seus movimentos e não se separa. Our gardens are more than just a plot of green land, whether that's in the back of our homes, on top of them, or surrounding them. Yes, its fundamental use is keeping us alive, but the experiences they enable are just as important for all the things we do, all the connections we make, everything we feel, think and believe in. The West may have its grand monuments and busy streets, but it's no coincidence that throughout all the trials and tribulations, we have kept the humble garden close. The Amazon, on the other hand, is really in a lot of trouble. Most places on earth are, but the scale and importance of this great garden is too large to ignore any longer. The noise. Índio que está lá na aldeia, a gente está vendo, a gente é, fala para ele, olha, presta, uh, olha para o céu. O céu está tá mudando, o sol também está mudando e a chuva também tá, está mudando. Avisamos para ele, para os homens, os homens não, não escuta, o homem, homem não, não acredita, porque eles não estão vendo, que nós estamos lá no, na nossa aldeia, na, na, na selva, nós estamos vendo. I hope the rainforest has become a little more approachable, not as daunting or as confusing. In this new light we see the garden as a rainforest and the rainforest as a garden, a relationship built on trust like it would be for a faithful companion. Let us not lose our oldest of friends. Shibu, you were money, you shibu, money, you shibu.